So, is the Canon 75 to 300 mm the worst lens in the Canon range or a decent choice for the price? Some photographers advise you not to go anywhere near this lens. Others insist it's all about knowing how to work with it. So, which opinion should you believe? In this video, we will investigate the good, the bad, and the downright ugly points of Canon's veteran EF 75-300mm to help you decide whether this lens should be the telephoto zoom in your kit. I've also included chapters in this video so you can skip around to the parts that interest you the most if you wish. The EF 75-300mm lens is a budget lens, so of course, it is constructed almost entirely of plastic. It does, however, have a metal mounting ring which feels more durable than a plastic mount. At 16.8 ounces or 480 grams, it isn't the heaviest lens on the market, but having that metal mount makes it feel secure. At its regular size, the lens measures 2.8 by 4.8 or 71 by 122 millimeters, so you can definitely feel it on your camera. The maximum full extension length is 7.78 inches or 197.5 millimeters. Canon EF 75 to 300 millimeters F4 to 5.6 Mark III USM is a long and complicated name. In fact, it seems as if all lens names are full of photography jargon. But once we decipher the code, we realize that long string of letters and numbers simply explains the lens. In this case, Canon is obviously the manufacturer. The EF stands for Electrofocus Mount, which connects the lens to the camera. The 75 to 300 mm portion is the minimum and maximum focal lengths, while the f4.5 to 5.6 is the aperture range, or how wide the lens can open in order to allow in more or less light. In our case, the f4.5 is the widest it can open at 75 mm, so zoomed all the way out, and f5.6 is the widest at 300 mm, or zoomed all the way in. Then finally, Mark III means this is the third version of the lens, and USM is the micro ultrasonic motor which controls the autofocus. Confusion often reigns amongst new photographers when it comes to telephoto and zoom lenses. So, what do these terms mean? A telephoto lens has a long reach and lets you focus on a subject which is far away. A medium telephoto lens will have a focal length between 60 and 200 millimeters, and super telephotos extend beyond 300 millimeters. A telephoto lens can be prime, which means that it has a fixed focal length, or it can move for a range of focal lengths in the case of zoom lenses. As you can see by its name, the Canon EF 75-300mm is a zoom lens with a focal length which ranges from 75mm all the way to 300mm. The autofocus is precise when used at the lower end of the range but runs into difficulties when you move out beyond 200mm. That means you'll probably want to switch to manual focus if your subject is far away. There have been complaints that the micro USM is rather noisy and this is one of the reasons why many enthusiasts don't use it for video work. Another reason why this lens may not be the best for video work is the lack of image stabilization. While this doesn't matter too much at 75mm, it's almost impossible to control camera shake when zoomed out to 300mm. That said, there are ways to get around the problem. The most obvious solution is to use a tripod, and that becomes essential when working at 200 to 300 millimeters. Another option is to shoot stills with a fast shutter speed, such as 1 over 125 or even 1 over 500. If you're on the move and don't want to carry a tripod, using fast shutter speeds can minimize the jostle. When it comes to the zoom, you might need to apply slight force to get it working, and if you're trying to move it slowly and carefully, it can tend to stick. But if you rotate the barrel quickly, you'll find the action is far more smooth. It's true that you'll also get quite a bit of chromatic aberration at those longer distances, but the lens produces a beautiful clear picture between 75 and 135 millimeters, especially if you stop it down to f4. It is possible to get soft bokeh when using the EF75-300, to but again, you have to know how to work with this lens. My best advice is to make sure you've left enough space between your subject and the background. That way, you'll have a nicely blurred background with your subject in focus in the foreground. The lens can produce some beautiful results. Here are some more portraits I took with it on the Canon 77D. The 
lens has roots way back in the 1990s when Canon designed the as a budget telephoto lens for film cameras. That means the EF75-300 lens will fit nicely onto a full frame camera as well as one with a crop sensor. You may however find some vignetting occurring when you use it on a full frame. Fortunately, there is little to none with a crop sensor camera which could be a factor to consider. It's unfair to compare the Canon EF75-300 with vastly more expensive telephoto or zoom lenses. It cannot and does not live up to those. That being said, not everyone can afford a terrific lens, so we need to consider whether this lens gives bang for the buck as a budget lens. You can buy it new or refurbished as a single lens and it's also often included as part of a bundle. So if you're just beginning your photography journey and want a cheap telephoto lens to get you started, then this can be a reasonable option. Many beginners don't care about the finer points that professional photographers obsess over. Right now, you may just want an affordable lens that allows you to get lovely close-up shots of your favorite pet or some wildlife at the zoo. And when you're shooting in good light and using a fast shutter speed, you can undoubtedly achieve decent wildlife shots as well as some striking portrait images. I primarily shoot portraits, which is why the examples that I've shown throughout this video have been just that. Another time you might be glad to have a budget lens is during those expeditions when conditions could get rough. Perhaps you spend a lot of time down on the beach. You still want to capture those images, but do you want to risk an expensive lens? Some photographers are happy to use this particular Canon model when they want to photograph sunsets, moonshots and portraits on the beach. That way, they can zoom in on that chamois on a rocky outcrop or capture flamingos on the lake, but won't cry too much if the lens gets banged up on the journey. Bear in mind, however, that this lens isn't weatherproof. So, when you see the Canon 75-300 in your next bundle, or if it comes up on sale, should you buy it? Many beginners will get several years of satisfying use before upgrading to a better but more expensive model. In the end, I'd have to say the decision depends on three things. Your budget, how you want to use it, and whether you're prepared to learn how to take successful photographs with this lens. Do you have any questions? Feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you'd like to purchase any of the items I've mentioned in the video or see how much they cost in your country, I have a link down below where you can view them. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.